This is a bit of an oddity because it can justifiably be called a vintage flashlight. It was sold as an emergency light and it only operates briefly. You, you can't uh, latch it on continually and it is a small focused tungsten lamp on the end. And this came from a shop in Glasgow called RME, Radio Mechanical Electrical, on Howard Street and it must be back in the 1980s. It's really old. And the most interesting thing about this little torch, this flashlight, uh, apart from the fact it's got this sort of zinc sulphide type sort of glow in the dark, I don't even think that's going to be visible to the camera, is it? Let's see if we can make it... No, it's not going to be visible. It's got this sort of glow in the dark material at the back here. And it's designed to be visible, you know, if there's a power cut it's visible. But the most interesting thing about this of all is that you just plug it straight into the mains and to charge it. And that was what really made me buy it, because back then it was like, how on earth can they make this rechargeable and put in a mains power supply to charge it in the first place? So here's what happens. You use a standard sort of figure eight lead and you shove it in the back here, noting that this is not actually fast together anymore. And the LED in here, very shimmery to the camera, but uh, that's not really surprising because it is sort of flashing half wave. And the little red LED glows and this thing trickle charges and it, it does just trickle charge because it's not really, if this was completely flat uh, then you wouldn't be able to, you'd have to leave it charging all day just to get a few decent operations out of it. So um, I would put this in the power meter and test it but I know what the circuitry is inside, I can remember what the circuitry is inside and it's not going to be, even be able to be read in the power meter. So let's open it up and take a look inside. I should mention that uh, this uses nickel cadmium cells uh, because it pre predates the nickel metal hydride. So the operation uh, here, I should also mention uh, I found this and brought it across recently and I just thought, oh, these batteries are going to be rotten inside, they're going to be leaking everywhere, and they're not. And I put it on a bench power supply and uh, boost charged it and uh, it took a charge no problem. So the operation is such that when this little lamp is in here, it's the pressing down. When you slide that switch, it just presses down this metal strip. Very simple and it makes contact the lamp. The electronic assembly is super simple. It's mainly the two rechargeable cells. Let's bring in the notepad. So let's uh, nudge the intensity down a wee tad for better contrast. So here's the circuitry. You've got your mains in. In this case, it's 240 volts. I should say 230 volts to comply with European regulations. Shall we check that right now? Shall we see what the voltage is right now and see if it's anywhere near the European 230 volts? I doubt it will be, but you never know. No, it's 244 volts. Yeah, so let's say 240 volts. Uh, so we get the 240 volts here, and it comes in, and one lead goes straight to the negative of the battery pack, and the other lead goes to this diode, which is pro it's a standard one amp diode, probably a one in four double oh seven or thereabouts. So that's an ordinary diode. Then it goes through the LED, very simple circuitry. Then through a resistor. And then to the nickel metal hydride cells. And that is it. That's all uh, nickel, met nickel cadmium cells, should I say. It's so hard to get out of that habit. It's so rare to find nickel cadmium cells these days. These ones do look a bit fluffy around the edge. Actually, they're not too bad. It doesn't look that bad. Given how old this is. I mean, let's... 1980s. It's now 2016. Yeah. Best part of, you know, heading for 40 years old. Not bad at all. Uh, the actual contact, let's see, let's draw it correctly here. So the other contact is down here. Uh, we've got the lamp is just connected like this. Little filament lamp. And the other contact is just, well, I'm not even going to draw it as a switch. I'm just going to draw it as a boing, big springy uh, bit of metal because that's it. So uh, what's the value of this resistor? The value of the resistor is green, blue, black, red. It's four band plus... Uh, Brown for the tolerance. Brown for the tolerance? That's kind of rare. 1% tolerance. I wonder if that's just because they chose a metal film resistor. So uh, that's uh, green, blue, black, red. So that's five, six, zero, and two zeros. 56K. 
56k. Uh, that resistor may, it looks kind of half wattish, but it may actually be as much as one watt. It's kind of floating in thin air, so it's going to have good, relatively good cooling, apart from the fact, of course, there's probably not much air circulation in here. Oh, no, there is. Uh, there's, oh, uh, is there? It's next to the connector. If the connector fills up that hole, then it's going to stop the air circulating. How close was that? Two. Yeah, it's fairly close-ish. Um, I suppose that ultimately there could, if it was a figure eight connector, it's got these wee dimples that would let air flow. So let's, uh, since it's, there's just no point plugging this into the power meter because it's such a low power it'll take, let's do the maths. So, um, 56k. Uh, I, the current, keep in mind it's going to be half wave, we'll work that out afterwards. The current is going to be I equals V over R, so that's going to be 240 volts RMS divided by 56K. So that's going to equal roughly, say, 4 milliamps. So let's say 4 milliamps. But it's actually going to be half that because the it's only active for half the time. So the power dissipation, if the resistor was running continually at that, would be times 240 volts equals about 1 watt. But... It's actually going to be half that because this diode means it's only active for half the cycle. So it's going to be 2 milliamps charge current and a half a watt dissipation from the resistor. And the resistor does look like a sort of 1 watt-ish metal, uh, metal film. So, yeah, that should be within its range. Although, having said that, it's going to get this LED hot. Having said that, this is a traditional old gallium arsenide red LED. Uh, so it's going to be quite robust. It's not as delicate as some of the more modern LEDs. So, I mean, it's just interesting circuitry. It's so simple. There's just so little to it. Uh, and it still works. The temptation then, uh, actually, you know, I wonder where that is. I did build an LED version based on the same thing with a resistor and the little socket, but I built it into this tiny little box. I wonder where that is. I don't think it's over here. Um, but, uh, so, yes. If I was going to do something equivalent to this with LED, I'd go for roughly the same circuitry. I would maybe choose... This would be a good application for the button cells out of uh, the solar garden light. So, yeah, 240 in. If you're uh, using, if your su main supply is lower voltage, if it's 120 volts, you can actually get off with using a much lower value resistor because uh, ultimately the higher voltage results in much higher power dissipation from the resistor. Um, you could probably get off with charging with actual 4 milliamp milliamps. Having said that, you know, for a wee emergency torch like this, it's not that critical. So I'd go again with the red LED because the red LEDs are pretty indestructible. Uh, I'd go through a resistor, you know, it could even be, for cool running, it could be 100k. Because it doesn't have to trickle through much current if this is just plugged in all the time. And then a couple of modern nickel metal hydride cells out of a solar garden light. Then, at that voltage, it'd be so low you could literally just actually have a switch and an LED, a white LED. Or you could add a resistor in series if you wanted, but if you just used two cells, uh, the LED in its own would glow modestly brightly when it was fully charged and it would gradually reduce in brightness, but it would last for a long time. Um, you could even uh, just leave this plugged in to charge while the LED was lit. It wouldn't really matter that much. I'm not sure. The battery would probably just go up to a sort of ambient charge level. Uh, the other option is to stick another nickel metal hydride cell in, and then you probably would need a resistor, but that would result in a much brighter LED. But again, probably better suited to just flashlight operation because um, the uh, the trickle charging would just be like one or two milliamps. It wouldn't be really dramatic. It would just really be something that would be designed to left up, be left on all the time. But that sort of current is negligible. It's the sort of thing you could just leave it on standby all the time without really worrying about it. You would have to keep in mind, though, that uh, all the circuitry here would be effectively at mains voltage, as it is in this. Uh, that's why everything's pretty much all just shrouded and covered to protect it. But uh, yeah, it's a neat little light. I kind of like it. I'm kind of glad, glad I found it. I thought it was really the bee's knees at the time. And of course, it reminds me of Radio Mechanical Electrical, which, which was just a, just a fabulous place. It was just 
a junkyard of electronic stuff in Glasgow. It was uh, where all the geeks and inventors went. It was just a, a definite must visit at this uh, weekend. Now, uh, no, I'm going to leave that for the next video. Uh, yes, I'll leave that for the next video. Uh, I'll end this video now, uh, and I'm just about to record another video with an interesting device and an announcement uh, regarding... Yeah, I'll announce that next video. That's the best thing to do. Okay, so on to the next video.